Good afternoon everyone, hopefully everyone's been enjoying PSO2 with the new luster class, the new level cap, as well as all the new content that has just hit the live servers. I, on the other hand, woke up today with quite the dilemma. I was playing, I was power leveling, I was doing all my stuff last night, my PC, everything was working perfectly fine, I grinded to my heart's desire, then I went to bed. I woke up today at 8 in the morning, and my streaming PC, as you guys know, the one on it over here would not launch windows for whatever reason and it kept booting me to the bios and i was just like why is it sending me to the bios so for those who don't know what the bios is it's like the control room for your pc it's like you can set up fan speeds you can overclock it you can do all this fancy dancy stuff which uh, i really don't care about but it kept sending me there and i was like can i just go into windows and like you know play games and stuff and like record videos and it would just like know you and so after resetting the computer multiple times and like trying to figure out what the hell's wrong with it it finally told me what was wrong with it, it gave me like this error message and uh, I googled the error message and I found out what was the culprit and it just so happened that the culprit was this solid state drive right here so what this streaming PC is actually like eight years old now so it is pretty old but I was very, very surprised that a flash drive or a solid state drive died before my mechanical hard drive. So I do have a Western Digital one terabyte mechanical hard drive, which is really, really slow, but it's really good for storing a lot of video and footage and stuff like that, especially when I'm recording longer videos such as the Arcs Trash videos and, uh, you know, storing backups for like the new Genesis footage and all of that stuff. While this little solid state drive is only 128 gigabytes, so it's really, really small. And so I bought a really cheap one. This I don't even know this brand. It's like some Chinese crappy brand. Apser, it's like Acer, but with like an AP in the front, Apser, but uh, it's garbage, okay? It died on me, and Windows was installed on this uh, solid state drive, and so I didn't have Windows anymore, because the solid state drive is dead. And so, 8 in the morning, there I am sitting there in my pajamas, scratching my head, going like, well, what do I do now? And so I looked up on Google, and I was like, alright, I'll download Windows 10, put it onto a USB drive and I reinstalled freaking Windows 10 on my streaming PC. And so Windows 10, everything's good to go on the streaming PC now, but in order to get Windows 10 actually installed there, I had to pretty much like wipe a lot of stuff. Um, I did lose a little bit of footage, but it's not a big deal. You know, I can always just re-record it and, uh, you know, get everything up and running. But the strange thing is, or the funny thing is, I wasn't even mad or frustrated at all because the only thing that was going through my mind was thank goodness it happened today and not yesterday. Yesterday was when we did the whole ARCS hour live stream and I was just thinking to myself, oh my goodness, if that happened yesterday during the ARCS hour live stream or like an hour before the live stream, I would be sweating bullets. But uh, because it happened today where I don't really have anything planned, I was just like, Whatever, I'll fix it. It's fine. No big deal. So the quality of today's video might be a little bit worse than usual, mainly because I'm saving it all onto, or I'm writing it all onto a crappy 5,400 RPM hard drive, which is like ancient technology back in like year 2000 or something. But um, yeah, so if the quality is bad, blame the hard drive. Don't blame me. It's not, it's not my fault. It's the hard drive's fault. <laughs> But don't worry, I have purchased a new solid state drive. It comes tomorrow. It's a Western Digital uh, one terabyte solid state drive. I had to buy a SATA drive. So the SATA drive is the ones that plug in like this. It's not an M.2 drive. M.2 drives are the ones that look like RAM sticks where you just shove into your motherboard. But um, yeah, because my motherboard is so ancient that it doesn't support M.2 drives. And... I'm too lazy to buy a whole new PC because the PC still works, right? It's just the stupid hard drive that died. So, uh, yeah. I went through a lot of technical issues. I actually recorded this video once already, only to realize that my uh, Streamlabs OBS was using like really, really crappy bitrate. Like, it was like a 30 minute video and it was like 500 megabytes. I was like, wait a second, something's off here. And I watched the video and the quality was absolute garbage. And so, 
I'm re-recording. But anyway, you're not here to listen to me rant all day long, or maybe you are. I, I don't I, I don't even know why you guys watch my videos. But in today's video, we're going to be talking about the update because some of these things are really, really important, especially if you want to start working towards your end game gear. But first of all, if you're new to the channel, I upload PSO2 content daily. So if you do play this game, I'd really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. All right, the very first thing that you guys should have noticed is that the level cap has been increased to level 100. And I highly recommend you guys to get as many classes to level 100 as possible, mainly because there is a title reward of augment transfer passes. You get 10 augment transfer passes for every class you get to level 100. So it is very, very beneficial to get all of them to level 100 because you're going to need a lot of augment transfer passes. If you're planning to get end game augments and you don't want to take any risk and you want to get like 100% chance, no gambling, no RNG, and you know, just get your augments, right? In order to do that, you're going to need a lot of these passes because that is the safest way to do it and there's zero gambling required. So uh, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. And in order to do that, I need to max out all these classes to level 100. Now, if you're a newer player and you don't have any of your classes at level 75 yet, what you can do is you can set any of these classes to subclass, except for the hero, because you can see right here, I'm highlighting main class. When I highlight subclass, the hero disappears. You see main class hero right here, subclass hero disappears. So what you can do is you can select any of these classes as a subclass, and that way you can play whatever main class you normally play and just, you know, play normally, right? Do whatever content you need to do, do your dailies, do your weeklies, whatever, gain EXP, and your subclass can level all the way up to level 80. Once your subclass gets to level 80, then you can switch it to the main class and maybe use a couple gold keys or a rainbow key or whatever key and just try to power level it to 100 ASAP so that you don't need to think about it anymore. But of course, if you enjoy the class, then by all means, just play it, right? Now, this method can also help you get a bunch of your classes to level 75 because don't forget when you get the class to level 75, there's a title bonus that gives you a permanent stat boost, which is account wide. So all of your characters will benefit from this permanent stat boost very very important so try to get all your classes to level 75 if you're a new player if you're an intermediate or veteran player just get all your classes to 100 so just to prove that you actually do get augment transfer passes talk to the title keeper right here and right here at class level you can see that i got a hunter to level 95 so i got a bunch of a weapon transmutation passes 70 and at level 100 you get 10 augment transfer passes you can see right here level 100 phantom another 10 and over here at level 100 at 12 another 10 augment transfer passes now also don't forget when you get classes to level 85 you also get a bunch of star gems so it's a win 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 across the board get all your classes to level 100 and redeem all of these title rewards you'll be rewarded greatly for it all right now the next thing i want to show you guys is the swap shop so we're going to go over to the swap shop cameo again so let's jump over here Hata, hata, hata. And right here, Cameo, we're going to talk to him and we're immediately going to go to the mission badge swap shop. And right here, you'll see the top three big, big items over here Astral Soul, Ether Factor, Mana Reverie. These are capsules. Capsules can be put on units or weapons, but please don't put this on your weapon. Please put this on your units. They are 100% success chance. You can just pop it in and you're good to go. It's super duper easy. All right. So these are very, very powerful. And the reason why I say you need a lot of augment transfer passes is because when you get a four slot unit with the perfect augments in order to upslot it to five slots, you can use one of these capsules. You just use a capsule. Boom. It's a five slot unit now. Now from five slot to six slot, let's put an ether factor over here. Boom, it is six slots now. From six slots to seven slots, let's put in mana reverie. Boom, it's seven slots now. And so it is super duper nice to have all of these really, really powerful augments for almost zero effort. The reason why I say almost is because you need mission badges. So if you have been playing PSO2 since the PC release, you might be like me with 1024 mission badges. Now the reason why I have more mission badges than most people is because I exchanged a lot of my cosmetic items into mission badges. You can tell which cosmetic items can be turned into mission badges by the background. You see this purple background? Anything with a purple background can be turned into a mission badge. So let me just go straight to my storage and I'll show you. So 
our retrieve item. Let's just go to all storage over here and we'll sort by AC scratch items and we're gonna scroll down. So you can see first the AC scratch item. So let's say that you need recycle badges. Recycle badges require the green background. So any AC scratch item is gonna have a green background, which means any of these can be turned into a recycle badge, all right? And we're gonna scroll all the way down until we see a purple one. And boom, right here. So again, we're gonna come back to Cameo over here. We're gonna to go to the mission badge swap shop, scroll to the very bottom over here, and you can see right here, mission badge, click on that, and boom, I can exchange this outfit into one mission badge. I click exchange, yes, and boom, now I've got an extra mission badge. And that is the reason why I have so many mission badges is because I don't collect that many cosmetic items. As you guys may know, I only change my outfit like once a year. So uh, yeah, I, I have a lot of cosmetic items from the mission pass that I can just change into mission badges. So definitely think about it because these capsules will save you a lot of headache because making Astral Soul without a capsule, like actually making it, is a nightmare of its own and you're gonna need to make the uh, Astral Soul first and then try to make Guardian Soul from that. Um, it's a nightmare, it really is a nightmare. But that's not all, we're gonna visit our favorite red light district over here and we're gonna talk to the badge and memory exchanger. We're gonna go to the exchange badge and go to unique weapon badges. At the very top, you're gonna be greeted with this solid barrier. So you're gonna look at it and you're gonna be like, Caro, who gives a crap about this solid barrier? I give a crap. The reason is because right here, you've got soul receptor, you've got factor receptor, you've got mutation two, and it only costs 400 unique weapon badges. And this is on a unit, not a weapon, a unit. These are super duper useful. So the TLDR for all of these augments is it'll make your life a lot easier in augmenting. Basically, it increases the chance, it makes your life easy, and you just, just get them, okay? If you are planning to do any augmenting, make sure you plan everything out beforehand first. Spend the time, please, please, please. You want to spend the time, be calm, plan out everything, and then pick up what you need. But just letting you guys know that you can get Soul Receptor, Factor Receptor, and Mutation 2 right here for 400 unique weapon badges. And it's on a unit! It's insane! It's so, so good. Now let's say you're not ready to augment your units yet because you're not even done with your weapon yet. Don't worry, when we go to Rising Weapon Badges and the Rising Weapon Badge 5 over here, right here there are two things that I want you to pay attention. We're gonna scroll down to them. And they are right here, S4 Escalating Pursuit. This is a very, very strong S4 ability, but do keep in mind, it does cost more than the others because it's just that good, all right? It costs 600 Rising Weapon Batch 5s versus all the other augments that don't cost nowhere near as much as this, all right? So S4, Escalating Pursuit, very, very powerful. The second I wanna point out is S5 Augment Bloon. Not a lot of people have been talking about this because technically it's not really good in like ultra end game, but situationally it's actually pretty good. And I wanna explain what it does. Because in the description over here, it just says double the changing of augment status. So most people are going to be like, what the hell does that mean? And, uh, you know, I was in the same boat. So I had to ask a bunch of veterans and be like, I don't understand how this works. D what does it double, right? So how this S5 ability works is actually really simple. You see your stat boost over here? It will double this. So these are all of my augments right now on my Trailblazer. Do keep in mind that Trailblazer doesn't actually support S5, so I can't really do it on this specific weapon. But what it will do is it will double all of my stats over here. So you can see that I have melee power plus 200 over here. It'll boost that to 400. It'll also boost my PP over here from 5 to 10, and I'll boost the range damage and the tech damage. However, it will also double the defense downs over here. So instead of melee defense minus 20, it will go up to minus 40. So it's a double-edged sword. But keep in mind, I have S1, S2, S3 over here on my Trailblazer because I needed melee amp and you know the story about the Trailblazer. Now, what weapons support S5? And the Rivolate weapon supports S4 and S5, which means you have six augments in order to boost whatever stat you want over here, and then you throw in that S5 and it'll double the stat. So it can make your Rivolate weapon into a god tier weapon. Now keep in mind, you are losing out on S-grade augments because some S-grade augments are really nice, such as Precision Will, which gives you critical damage plus 4%, so forth and so on. You will be losing out on those S-grade augments, but then again, the Rivolate weapon only supports 4 and 5 anyway. 
So for the Rivulet weapon specifically, that S5 ability is extremely strong, making your Rivulet weapon into the ultimate stat stick. Like maybe get your melee power to like plus 250 melee power, then double that, then that's 500 melee power on just the weapon. And uh, you can go pretty bonkers. But then again, when the cross weapon comes out, if you guys are planning to use the cross weapon, I wouldn't recommend using this S5 ability, mainly because the cross weapon supports 5S abilities, which means you only have 3 additional augments to uh, put whatever you need, which probably mean your stats will not be very high over here. Another thing to keep note of is that S5 ability does not, I repeat, does not double percentages. So for example, if you have Precision Will over here, which increases critical damage plus 4%, it will not double it. It will not give you 8% critical damage. It will only boost flat stats. It will not boost percentages. It's very important to understand that, okay? And last but not least, I want to talk about the mission pass, of course. If we look over here at tier 5, we will get 20 dark stones, which is very, very nice. But not only that, at tier 15, we get another 30. So that will be a total of 50 dark stones, which is pretty much enough to make our dark banisher air weapons. Unfortunately, Ziggs does not allow us to make our air weapons yet, which also means we can't make our cross weapons yet. But I wouldn't really go out of my way to make an air weapon right now. Even if it becomes available in the next week or the next month, I wouldn't rush to make an air weapon. The reason for that is because the air weapon by itself is not stronger than your Rivolate weapon, especially if you're using a Rivolate weapon. So there's no rush to make the weapon since you're not going to be using it. What I recommend most people to do is wait until the cross weapon comes out, then make your air weapon upgraded to cross, so forth and so on. The reason I say that is because from history, Think about it. We got the Atlas EX weapon for free, right? This was like the very first time like a couple months back. Then the event that's happening right now, we get the Atlas EX for free, we're getting the Trailblazer weapon for free, and we got the Rivolate weapon for free. So why wouldn't they give us the AR weapon? So I would farm all the materials I need to make the AR weapon, but I wouldn't make it immediately. I would wait a little bit and see if they give it for free. Because if they do give it to you for free, you can use those materials that you saved up in order to upgrade to your cross weapon. Because the cross weapon basically uses all the materials that you need in order to make the air weapon, right? So you might as well just sit on your materials a little bit, don't jump the gun too fast, or else you might get buyer's regret, like all those people that rushed the Rivolate weapon only to find out, you know, two weeks later that everyone got it for free. It really sucks. It, it's a really bad feeling. So I recommend most people just be patient, you know, see what happens first before making your air weapon. All right. But yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye. What can I say except you're welcome for the heals that boosts the rest.